Hey, what's up everybody? Pi Guy here. And today we're going to go over how to install Kodi and set it up from scratch on RetroPie. Um, that's something that uh, everybody really wants to know, so I figured this would be a good one to go over. So um, I'm in Emulation Station right now, so yours probably looks similar to this, whatever theme you have going on, but it's all, it's all the same stuff. So let's hop into RetroPie. And from there... To install Kodi, it's actually an optional package under RetroPie Setup. So you want to hop into there. And you want to go into Manage Packages and Manage Optional Packages. So scroll all the way down. This is pretty much in alphabetical order. You want to get past all of these IRs. These are basically um, emulators. Um, but keep going. It's a little bit further. And actually right here, it's 308 Kodi. Now, I'm going to install that, install from binary. It'll take a few minutes to set up here. Just let it do its thing. It'll get there. Also, it's going to depend on the speed of your internet connection. Um, but when it's done, it'll take you back to the prior screen. And one of the things I wanted to go over is um, I'm actually running on script 4.1.16 right now, which is actually pretty older. Just, this is just an older SD card I haven't fiddled with much lately. Um, just a day or so ago they released 4.2 uh, for an update. But um, I'm at 4.1.16, and, and the reason I'm saying that is this is going to have the most updated version of RetroPie, which is, I mean, I'm sorry, of Kodi, which is actually Kodi Krypton. Um, everybody was a little upset when it first released, and the reason for that was because it was a little bit different looking, but there was no working wizards for, I don't know, like a week or so. Now there's a good amount of them out there. Um, I have my favorite, which has several builds within that setup wizard. So I'm going to show you how to access all of that and get this thing going. I'll probably do a follow-up video to this on how to change your build within the same wizard too, because that's good to know. Um, but sit tight here. This will get done. I'll probably just do a quick cut to save us a minute or two here. All right, so we're back. That took... I don't know, like about five minutes or so, give or take. Uh, it may take a little longer than yours, maybe a little less. It, it's all good. Just give, be patient. It'll get there. Um, so it took us right back to the screen we're at. And if you notice now, we have the option to remove the package. We don't want to do that. Not yet. Do you remember how to get here? We're going to come back to this in a little bit. So just go ahead and uh, get your keyboard, hit escape, escape. Escape, you are going to need a keyboard for this, so I'll just give you a heads up. So once we get into Kodi, there's some typing involved. Um, so I'm going all the way back out. Now there's nothing here, and that's because everything you install on Emulation Station just requires you to do a quick restart of Emulation Station before it pops up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Now we want to scroll over and look for something called Ports, which is now here. This was not here before. Kodi's going to be in here. You can also scrape this if you want to. It'll give you a nice little icon. I'm not going to do that here. But we can hop in. And our Kodi Krypton is going to boot up for us here in a moment. And there we go. Kodi Krypton, first run. Uh, looks a lot different than Jarvis, which was the previous setup that Kodi was putting out. But I promise you, everything and more is still here. It's just getting used to the menus. Everything's a little different to get to but once you understand how it works it's it's pretty simple um first thing you want to do is go all the way up to this little cogwheel that's for your settings um and go over to system oh, go over to system settings i hit the wrong one there and go down to add-ons and you want to uh allow unknown sources by default it's set to no it's going to give you a little warning message just hit yes and then go back so then we want to go into our file manager and we're going to add a source and you have to type this exactly the way it's shown otherwise it's going to give you an error message it's not going to work so you want to do http colon slash slash stvmc or i'm sorry colon slash slash uh repo Getting ahead of myself there. Repo.stvmc.net slash. 
and hit OK. Then we want to enter a name for it. You can name it whatever you like. I like to put a dot here in front of whatever I call it because then it'll be at the top of the list later that I'm going to show you. Uh, STVMC, that's just what I'm naming it. OK. Now once you hit OK here, you shouldn't get an error message. If you do, you probably just mistyped something. Could be a space, could be a slash instead of a dot, whatever it is. There's something wrong there, but we can see it here. We're not going to go into it there. Go ahead and hit escape, escape, back to the main menu, and hop on down to add-ons. And you're going to go up here to this little box on the top left of the menu, and you want to do install from zip. Now, some people like to use other ones. This is, this is from Streams TV. This is just what I like to use. You can follow a uh, similar procedure for other uh, setup wizards if you know them. This is what I like to do. It's all going to be similar the way you set it up. But I just clicked on uh, on the source that I just named there that, that we created. And you want to do uh, the second one here, repository.spinzip. Click on that. If you give it a second, towards the top right portion of the screen, yep. Spins TV add-on installed. That's what we want. Um, so go ahead and jump into install from repository and spins TV. And from there, we're going to go into program add-ons and we want to, we want to install the wizard. That's going to make it all look pretty for us and not have to do everything one at a time. So select that, select install and it's downloading. We're going to get a pop up here in a moment. Not those pop-ups, those are good too. It means it's doing its thing, it's still downloading. Just be patient, give it a minute. I'm running on Wi-Fi right now, I do have pretty good internet speed. So this is gonna go pretty quick. Just let it do its thing. And here we go. So this is just telling you about their Facebook page, you can go ahead and dismiss that. I've actually changed this since I did it last. Okay, so they're making improvements. They're, they're allowing you to select your options at the start of installing your wizard. Um, one thing that I will make mention of here is clearing your cache. You should do that every so often. If you let the setup wizard do it automatically every time you launch, that's a good thing. Um, you won't get all these files to slow down your system, but the thing that annoys me is it doesn't keep track of the shows that you watch. You won't get the little check mark. So if you're watching a season of something and you're like, what episode did I leave off on? It's been like a month. You won't have that little check mark. So I'm going to turn mine off. If you want to leave yours on, that's totally up to you. I just clicked it here. It's giving me a little bit lag, but there you go. It updated. it. So you can look through these, configure it the way you like. Um, that's really all I would want to modify on mine. But I'm going to hit continue now. So this is what I'm used to seeing. That little pop-up was new. They're making improvements, so that's good. Uh, you want to click Build Menu. All right, so it takes us right here. So this is what I was saying. This wizard has multiple builds. Spins TV does multiple ones. This is uh, Krypton, which is the Cody we're running on. If, you, if you're running on Jarvis, you can select one of these as well. I like to give you a little picture as a preview. Typically I use hard knocks, but I've been checking out some of these other ones and I feel like they work a little better. Uh, some people I set this up with, or four I should say, told me that hard knocks was running a little slow for them. Um, I see that sometimes it does act up a little bit. Fury is good, it's a lighter, lighter load build. I'm gonna go with uh, this premium light. I like this one too. This one in Fury, I. I personally like. I've been checking them out the last week or so. Pretty good builds. So I'm going to pick this one. And you want to go down to fresh install. Whatever build you pick, you'll come to the same screen. It's just going to say the name of your build right here at the top. So go to fresh install. And it should come up with another pop up here. Do you wish to restore your Kodi configurations to default? Yes, that's why we're doing a fresh install. And let it do its thing. This goes pretty quick. Takes, uh, I don't know, not even five minutes, I would say. 
it's going to download and then it's going to give you a similar thing to install i'll probably do a cut here for you guys just to save you the time all right so that's all done that took uh again about five minutes or so maybe a little bit less and you're going to come to this pop-up box would you like to force close cody or reload profile you want to force close it in order for the wizard to take effect you have to close cody so we did most of the hard stuff and you're going to say cool all i got to do is go back into cody and my build should be going not quite yet if you go in it kicks you right back out and that's just something that's unique to the Raspberry Pi that I've noticed. This doesn't happen if you do this on a Fire Stick. Um, but it's a simple enough fix. So you want to go back and go to our RetroPie menu and RetroPie Setup. Remember I was saying to remember how to get to the optional package for Kodi. Um, for whatever reason, you go to Manage Packages, Optional Packages, and go down to Kodi. For whatever reason... You have to uninstall it and reinstall it. And then when you go back in, your wizard is going to be there. I don't know the coding issue or why exactly it's like that. But you want to go to remove Cody. Are you sure? Yes. Don't worry. It's going to save all the work you did. Not going to have to repeat everything. So this should take, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds or so to uninstall. And to reinstall it, again, you know, three to five minutes. All right, so that just finished uninstalling. It took about a minute or so. And you can see that the options here are different again. I'm still within Kodi, but now I'm just gonna install from binary like we did the very first time and give that a few minutes to do its thing. All right, so we're back. Kodi just finished reinstalling. So go ahead and escape out of this and let's get back to the emulation station menu. So hop over to ports and go back into Kodi, and now it's going to launch for us. So every time you come into Kodi for the first time, after you install a wizard, you need to let it run for a few minutes. Um, sometimes I notice it doesn't always launch in the wizard right away. Don't worry, everything's still working. Just go ahead and let it do, let it, do its thing. You can see here, I just sat there for a couple seconds and the wizard pop-up box came up and now everything just changed over. Totally normal, don't panic, everything's working fine. When you run Kodi for the first time, especially if you just did a new setup wizard, always, always, always let it run for about five minutes or so. Let it install, let it set up the build, let it get the add-ons up and running for you. Even though it looks like it's ready to go, you can navigate. If you start going into these, it's going to lag on you big time, and that's because it's doing things in the background to set up your build. So just be patient. You can see the wallpapers aren't up here. The little boxes on the bottom are just grayed out. The thumbnails, totally normal. If you see on the bottom left, it's all these add-ons are installing. It's, it's working. Just don't overload it. Don't let it get confused. It's using a CPU. Wallpapers are popping up now. Thumbnails are populating. You can see it's all coming together. I do get this on this build sometimes to use this feature. You must download an add-on skin helper to service the widgets. Let's do it. Just hit yes. It's only going to make it run smoother, so go ahead and give it the okay. Now, once you let it sit for a few minutes, there's a few things... You, you can totally just run into Exodus or whatever you want to start using and things are going to work. But there's a couple things you can do to improve it and a couple things that are going to annoy you if you don't change in the settings. One of them is it's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon for me where I am. My clock says it's 8.05. I covered that in another video, how to, how to change your clock. Um, it's going to be similar for all builds. Just a matter of getting to know your menus a little bit better. Um, the other thing is, especially for me with Exodus, when I go into, uh, the movie, there's, there's two things or a TV show, it doesn't matter, but there's two things. One of them is it takes too long for it to, um, to actually pull all the sources. When you select something, it'll just keep running and running. You can actually change that cutoff timer. You know how it counts as it's going through all the sources it's pulling. You can change that cutoff timer. I'm going to show you guys that right now. I'm going to hop into Exodus. 
Hopefully I let it run for long enough. I'm, I'm also trying to keep it under a time limit here. So if there's lag here, it's because things are still setting up. But once you go into Exodus, you need to get to the Tools option. And sometimes it's not always there. It's because you have to go back out a level, even though all you did was click on Exodus. So with this build, it comes up here for us right away. If it doesn't for yours, just go ahead and click at the very top, up one level here. Those, those dots at the top, and then you should come to this menu. But I want to go ahead and click on Tools. And this is pulling up for me, which is great. So you want to go into General. And if you scroll down here to Providers Timeout, that's that clock that I was telling you about. So press Enter again. That's good. The other thing you want to get rid of, the other thing that annoys me is sometimes when you select a provider to watch something, you get this pop-up box. They want you to go to a website. They want to let you watch what you got to do without it. Those are hosters with captures. Unselect that, and you will not get that pop-up box anymore. So make sure you hit OK. Don't just escape out of this. Things won't save. So once you hit OK, you can go up a level here. And you can go ahead and do whatever you want to do. You can go into your movies, select your genres, whatever it is. Um, I like this build. It's clean. It doesn't have automatically changing wallpapers. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. You got your Exodus right here. Um, that's always my go-to. I know some people like Zen and things like that. Those can also be found in here. Um, but yeah, pretty good build. And in my next video, I'm going to go over how to change your build within the same um, within the same wizard. So like, like I showed you with the install process, um, there was about four or five different Spins TV builds, and I just selected one. I'm going to show you how to switch it up without going through the whole thing from, from scratch again. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. If you would like, share, uh, consider subscribing if this was helpful to you. And um, just let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.